All right, guys, number one. So there are only blue cubes, red cubes, and yellow cubes in a box. The table shows the probability of taking at random a blue cube from the box. Okay, so that's your probability table, guys. And our quantum statement, it says that the number of red cubes in the box is the same as the number of yellow cubes in the box. Complete the table. So what I will do, guys, is that I will label both red and yellow x, and we should know that all properties always add up to 1. So by default, summing all this up and making an equation and saying to 1 will give you that. Now what we could do is just rearrange to make 2x a subject, so subtract 0.2 across, and lastly, guys, just smash 2 underneath, in other words, halving it, and you should get 0.4 for both red and yellow and that's it guys so that's pretty much 1a done now let's move on to the next bit here so uh, 1b so there are 12 blue cubes in the box and here they want us to work out the total number of cubes in the actual box okay so let's switch, go back to the table now from here we can see the property is 0.2 for blue in other words this is kind of telling us that 20 percent of all the uh, cubes must be blue so in other words 12 is equivalent to 20 percent of everything in the box so let's go try and find 100 percent that means 10% must be 6 if you half it, and then timesing it by 10, well, this means that a complete set must be 60. And that's it, guys. That's pretty much all you got to do. All right, number two. So D needs 50 grams of sugar to make 15 biscuits, yeah? Now, she also needs three times as much flour as sugar. So let's go form an equation, guys, yeah? So if you've got 50 grams of sugar, that means three times 50 must give us 150 grams of uh, flour. Okay, cool. So that's one piece of info. And for the second, it's just 2 times as much butter as sugar. So 2 times 50 gives us 100 grams of butter. So I think these two are the most important things to have right now, yeah? So always try and note things down. Now for the next bit, Dean is going to make 60 biscuits. And we need to work out the amount of flour she needs. Well, so far, we know how many sugar needs, is needed for 50 biscuits. So this means that 15 biscuits is equal to exactly 150 grams of flour. So this is kind of like directly equivalent. And we notice that 60 biscuits is just 4 times bigger. So 4 times 150 is 600 grams. Done. Now Dean has to buy all the butter she needs to make 60 biscuits. She buys the butter in 250 grams packs. Now how many packs of butter does Dean need to buy to make 60? Alright, so according to the information, we know previously she needed 100 grams of butter to make uh, 15 biscuits. So this means if 15 biscuits is equal to what 150 grams of butter, then we can instantly say that to make 60, this is just literally 4 times um, as much. So 4 times 100 is just basically what? 400 grams, guys. And that's it. So in, in, in essence, because each pack is 250 grams, she will need to buy 2 packs to make 500 grams, which will cover the 400 grams. So she needs 2 packs. That's it. Alright, number 3. So here we need to find the highest con factor of 72 and 90. Okay? So the trick of these ones, guys, is to always break these numbers using prime factor trees. So check it out. So what we could do with 72 is just break it down to 2 and 36. And then from 36, we can break it down further to 2 pairs of 6s. And lastly, breaking down each of the 6, you get 2s and 3s. Now all you got to do is circle the last legs and then stick them together like this. And then repeat the same for 90. So for 90, we can see we can break it down again by 2 and 45. And then 45 is in a 5 times table, so 5 and 9. And 9 is just 3 times 3. Now, let's go ahead and circle the last leg, guys. So, you should circle 2, 5, 3, and 3. And then just chain together. So, you've got 2 times 3 squared because you've got 2 of them times 5. And that's it. Now, for the highest common factor, guys, all you literally have to do is ask yourself, all right, what powers do both of these numbers have in common? So, for example, if you look at number 2, they both have at least a single power of 2. So, that means the highest common factor is 2. As for threes, they both have at least two powers of three, so three squared. And for five, well, only a single one has five, so it doesn't count. That means your result is just two times three squared, which is 18, guys. And that's it. All right, number four. So it says here that the diagram shows the plan, front elevation, side elevation of a solid shape drawn on centimeter grid. Okay, so here's the plan, the front elevation, and the side. Now, in the space below, draw a sketch of the solid shape. Okay, so... In this case, guys, we just have to draw a 3D representation of these diagrams, yeah? Now, what I would personally do is firstly label the size, see the lengths. So what we have here is firstly a height of 5 and a width of 4 for both front and side. And we can see that the radius of the circle is just 2. So that's pretty right. 
So if you kind of think about it, from a 3D perspective, this kind of looks like a cylinder, in my opinion. Because you've got a circular base. If you look at it from the front, it's just something that stands up. And then you've got the side. So sketching the cylinder, it, it's going to look a bit like this, yeah? You've got your circular top. You've got your body. And um, what we can see is that we've got a radius of 2. And the vertical height is just, well, what? 5, yeah? So just for a second, let me just check the top for a second. Um, yep, so it's 5. And by the way, the 4 is trying to say, it's trying to represent the diameter, guys. Yeah, so 4 is the entire thing across. And that's it. That's pretty much the whole shape. All right, number 5, guys, yeah? So let's have a look. Now, shape A can be transformed to B by reflection in x-axis followed by translation of C and D. So just a quick note. A translation just means that you're moving it across by C and up by D. So just a straight-up shift. Now, what's happening here? So the reflection tells us is over here on the x-axis. So boom, that's our mirror line. And all we're going to do is more or less reflect that shape A. So the way I do it, guys, I just count how many blocks is away. In this case, it's two blocks away. And then I just ask myself, all right, if this two blocks from the x-axis on the above, it must be two below. So it should look a bit like that. The base and then the rest of the triangle should be exactly as you see it. Now, at this stage, we want to find out how far it's moved. So that's the vector of translation. So first we move horizontally. We can see that if we pick the top left corners of both shapes and we count the blocks, we find out that it's moved exactly six to the left and one down. And because we're moving against the x-axis, it will be a negative 6. It will be a downward movement of negative 1. And that's it, guys. That's literally all you need to do. All right, number 6, guys. So a shop sells packs of black pens, packs of red pens, and even packs of green pens. Okay? Now, according to the statement, there are two pens in each pack of black pens. All right? There's also five pens in each pack of reds and even six pens in each pack of greens. Now, Monday tells us that the number of black pens sold versus reds versus greens were given by that ratio. In other words, seven represents the number of packs that were black, three represents the number of packs that were red sold, and four represents the number of packs that were green sold. And, and as per usual, guys, just add up the packs. We might even need it later. Now, just look at this question carefully. In the beginning, it said that two pens in each pack of black pens were sold. And we know that there were seven packs sold, so this means seven times two. And we do the same for the three and the four parts. We end up getting three times five and four times six. So doing the maths, you should get 14 for the first one, 15 for the second one, and 24 for the last one. And okay, so let's just keep that there for a second. So these are the number of pens that are actually sold as parts. Now for the next part, it says that a total of 212 pens were sold. Well, apparently, these 53 parts now should equal 212 pens sold. Okay, as the statement says here. And they want us to work out the number of green pens sold. So 212 pens equals 53 parts. And as always, guys, for any type of ratio, always find one part. So to find one part, if we divide the first number by 53, and this is kind of hard for a calculator question, I'm not going to lie, we should recognize that it goes into it exactly four times. If the math is a bit hard, just try and partition the fi that 53 as 50 and 3, and you'll notice that 4 times 50 is 200, 3 times 4 is 12, so it fits. Now, the rest of the math is easy. So you want to find the number of green pens. We know there was 24 green pens sold. So 24 times 4 must give us 96 pens actually sold. And that's it, guys. That's the question done. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel and if you've enjoyed the content so far just go into my channel page hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications and if you want you can do personalize or all and that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos anyway guys thank you for watching and see you next time ciao